Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I like to start a new topic of discussion, okay, which is on TLL face lock loop. Okay, so this video, I'm going to do an introduction to the building blocks of face lock loop. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is also known as PLL. In fact, there are three components that make up of this face lock loop. Okay, so this video, we are going to do an introduction to them one by one. Okay, so this will be the part one series discussion on face lock loop. So guys, if you're keen to know more about face lock loop, okay, I'm going to put more video onto the link on the description. So guys, if you're keen to know more about face lock loop, please take a look on the playlist under the description. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, okay, I actually prefer you guys to ask your question through the comment. Okay, so this is because I hardly check this email. So guys, if you ask me through the comment, okay, I think I will have a better response. Before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Thank you so much. Let's quickly understand what is actually a phase lock loop. Okay, so this phase lock loop is a control system that compares the phase of the input signal with that of a reference signal. Okay, so this is a phase detector here. So you can see that this is actually a reference. This is actually an input signal. So in short, as it mentioned over here, the key job of phase lock loop is simply compare the phase of the input signal with that of a reference signal. So basically, this is an input signal. They compare against the reference signal. And thereafter, they will adjust the phase of the output signal to match that of the reference signal. In short, at the output of the phase detector, okay, so they will actually determine how much different okay, of the phase between the reference and the input. So basically over here, okay, they will indicate, okay, for example, how much key difference between the reference and also the input. Keeping the input and output phase in locks also implies maintaining the input and output frequency as equal. Okay, so when we actually so-called keep in place in terms of the phase, okay, we also indirectly also Okay, so called keep track in terms of the frequency. So, in short, when they are actually in lock, okay, which means that they are actually in phase, the frequency should be also the same. Okay, so basically, this is what it means. Thus, a phase lock loop can also track frequency. Okay, by incorporate a frequency divider, a phase lock loop can generate a stable frequency that is a multiple of the input frequency. Okay, so this part here, we are going to take a close look later on okay, from the frequency synthesizer. A phase slope loop is a closed loop system that is mainly used for frequency control. Okay, several building blocks are common to most PLL design. Okay, so as I show it to you this diagram early on, there are actually three main components. Okay, the first one will be the phase detector. Okay, the next one will be the loop filter. Okay, so typically for this loop filter will be a low pass filter. And last but not least, BCO, voltage control oscillator. Okay, so what is actually a phase detector? Okay, so this component compares the phase of the input signal, okay, which is the feedback signal. Okay, so basically this is actually so-called the input signal to the phase detector. Okay, so basically they compare versus the reference signal. Okay, so basically this is a reference signal. And typically for reference signal, it will be a stable oscillator signal. Okay, which means that this is actually a very stable frequency. So therefore the input will compare against the reference and they actually produce an output signal proportional to the phase difference between the two. So in short over here, the bigger the difference, okay, there will be a bigger in terms of the signal at the output. The smaller the difference between the phase of the reference versus the input, then the smaller indication at the output of the phase detector. Okay, so basically this is the role of phase detector. In short, there are two input and one output. The input okay, basically will compare against the phases 
at the output, they actually indicate how close in terms of phase between the reference and the input. The loop filter, okay, as I mentioned earlier on, the loop filter typically will be a low pass filter. The output of the phase detector usually contain high frequency noise. Okay, so imagine this like a mixer. Okay, when you actually mix these two signals into one, there is loss of so-called harmonics, etc. Or and therefore, because of this, we need to filter away all the high frequency noise. So hence this is done by a low pass filter. Okay, so the low pass filter will remove this noise and extract the low frequency component, okay, which represent the phase error. Okay, so basically this loop filter remove all the high frequency noise and what left up at the output of the loop filter okay, will be the low frequency component okay, which represent the phase error. What is actually a VCO? Okay, VCO actually generate an output signal whose frequency is determined by the control voltage applied to it. Okay, so basically this will be the control voltage and they basically control the output signal, which is in frequency. Okay, the control voltage is provided by the loop filter, which adjusts it based on the error signal. Okay, so don't worry. Okay, so on my next video, I will fully describe how all these come into place to make a phase lock loop. Next, on a feedback loop, okay, the output signal from the VCO is fed back to the phase detector closing the loop so basically this will be a feedback loop okay feedback loop basically means that output signal go all the way back to the input again okay so therefore it is known as feedback loop okay the phase difference between the input and the feedback signal is minimized okay so basically the phase here and the phase over here they will be minimized okay by adjusting the vco frequency via the control voltage okay so hopefully you have a better idea Okay, so all these four components that make up of this phase slot loop, maybe three components and the mechanism of a feedback loop. Okay, before I continue, guys, okay, please help this channel by like this video. Okay, if more of you guys actually like this video, there will be a higher chances for this video to reach up to a larger audience. If you have learned something from this video, please consider to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Thank you so much. Okay, let me explain this phase slot loop okay, like a daily so-called example so that you have a better understanding what is actually a phase slot loop. A clear understanding of the concept of feedback control is illustrated by an everyday situation. Okay, the simple action of controlling the speed of a car. Let's say if the desired speed is 60 km per hour, then this becomes the reference point. Okay, so therefore, okay, I want to maintain the speed of a car at 60 km per hour. So therefore, this becomes the reference point. Okay, can you still remember? Okay, for the phase detector, I actually has this reference. Okay, so basically, typically for phase detector, this reference will be so-called by a stable. Okay, for this case here, imagine I want to maintain the car at 60 km per hour. So therefore, this will be like a reference point. Okay, any deviation from this speed is considered an error. Okay, so if it's 60 km per hour, then no error. But anything like, for example, 59, there will be an error. 61 km per hour, there will be also considered an error. Okay, the accelerator. Okay, so I guess if you know how to drive, okay, basically the accelerator pedal service, they actually serve as a control element. Okay, so basically the accelerator, they basically control the speed of the car. Okay, whether you want to increase the speed or reduce the speed, okay, if you want to increase the speed, you can step on a little bit more on the accelerator pedal service. And if you want to reduce the speed, okay, you can lift your foot off a little bit from the accelerator pedal service. So therefore, with this, you actually imagine that you can actually properly control it at this 60 km per hour. Okay, on a level terrain, okay, which means that this is a flat area, Okay, you actually can maintain a constant pressure on a pedal and this will actually sustain a constant speed, which is 60 km per hour. So in this scenario, for example, let's say the ground is level. So therefore, you just need to maintain a constant pressure on the 
accelerator pedal service. Okay, so this will ensure that it will maintain a constant speed of 60 km per hour. However, okay, when your car actually climb a hill, okay, it will naturally decelerate, okay, which means that the speed actually will reduce. Okay, I guess you know that when you actually come out to a hill, okay, for example, when you run also, when you run up a hill, okay, naturally your speed will reduce. Okay, the variance between the actual speed and the reference value generate an error signal. So basically over here, your actual speed of the car, for example, for this case here, versus the reference value, which is the 60 km per hour, they will generate an error signal. Okay, so this error then trigger a command to adjust the accelerator pedal accordingly. Okay, so if you do this manually, for example, okay, when you actually slow down, when you climb up a slope, then you will step on the accelerator pedal more. So therefore, this will increase the speed slightly. Okay, so while pushing the pedal increase the speed, okay, a slight error may persist. Okay, so on the so-called, on the way that you actually adjust your speed okay, by stepping onto the accelerator. Okay, so typically, this small little error will still persist. Subsequently, as the car press the hill and begin to descend, okay, so basically your car actually moved down the hill, okay, your speed will accelerate. Okay, so now this is on the other side. So instead of 60 km, let's say now you are actually at 65 km per hour. Therefore, your speed actually will increase. So therefore, you need to release the pressure on the accelerator pedal. Okay, so this will slow down the acceleration. Okay, yet an error may persist until a steady state condition is re-established. Okay, so over here, okay, early on I mentioned that let's say this is a flat route, then if you maintain a constant so-called pressure on the accelerator, then your speed can remain the same. However, when your car actually climb up a hill, okay, so your speed will reduce. And in order to maintain 60 km per hour, you probably need to step a little bit more on the accelerator. So on the other scenario, when you actually go down a hill, okay, your speed actually increase. So in order to reduce your speed, you probably need to reduce the accelerator pedal in order to maintain this 60 km per hour. So in the meantime, when you actually so-called step on the accelerator or release the accelerator, okay, some little error will still persist. Okay, so basically this is what this slide want to mention. In this example, the driver brain act as the feedback loop. Okay, so basically your brain, okay, whether to accelerate or deaccelerate, okay, they are actually behave like a feedback loop of a face lock loop. Okay, by this discriminating when to apply pressure and when to release it, the driver regulate the feedback effectiveness. So basically, this is what I mentioned early on. So whether you want to apply pressure on the accelerator or release okay, the, the so-called the pressure on the accelerator, okay, so basically the driver actually regulate this feedback effectively. Additionally, their reaction time influence how close the car speed aligns with the desired reference point. Okay, so now we don't talk about the speed. Now we talk that how much is our reaction time. For example, let's say if we if we climb up the hill, okay, in order to make this 60 kilometer quickly, we probably need to step a little bit more on the accelerator and therefore the speed can increase faster. So basically this is what it means. Okay, the reaction time can okay, influence how closely the car speed align with the desired reference point. Okay, the driver can opt for rapid correction, okay, which means that they accelerate quickly okay, to closely match the desired speed or choose a more gradual approach to ensure the average speed align with the target value. So there are mainly two approaches here. As you mentioned here, I can quickly do the correction or I want to ensure this correction will be gradually so that I won't so-called have a pit search or a deep case so as to ensure the safety of the driving, for example, for this case here. Okay, his action coupled with the car control form a system closely analogous like a phase lock loop. Okay, replace the human with an electrical circuit that sends the speed error, including another circuit that tempt the response time and couple it to the 
accelerator control. Okay, so this is the typical cruise control system. Okay, so with this, I like to end my discussion. Okay, over here, I hope you have some idea what is actually a phase lock loop. In short, this phase lock loop basically help to lock on to a desired frequency. With this, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.